Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video, we'll be taking a look at the farming system in Black Desert in a general beginner's overview type of mindset. So if you've never gotten into farming before, or if you've dabbled in it and want to get a little bit more information about how to do it, this video is for you. This is not about grinding farming, this is about actual growing plants from seeds, or I guess in Black Desert you can turn hay into cows too, so if you want to magically turn plants into animals, we can do that as well through the power of the Black Spirit, of course. But anyway, real quick, before we get into the video, if you are new to the channel, new to Black Desert, or enjoy the content on the channel that you've been seeing so far, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It would mean a lot to me and would help to grow the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it, and let's get started with the first thing you're going to need to do to get farming. And the first thing you're going to need to get doing to get farming is to pick yourself up a fence. So fences are things that you can plant different seeds or animals inside of. You can have a maximum of 10 fences and the maximum slot Fence costs 10 contribution points, so you will need 100 total contribution points in order to purchase all these fences that you can need. So you get 10 fences of 10 each for 100 total slots for 100 contribution points. If you don't know what a contribution point is, it's this number up in the top left corner of your screen. I'm at 24 out of 329. So the best place to buy these fences is probably in Heidel. So if you open up your map, Heidel, major city that you visited a billion times in your playthrough so far in Black Desert, major city located right here. Head on up to this upper echelon of the city where we have the different merchants up on top up here. And you were looking for the merchant Flaviano. So merchant Flaviano will sell you the fences. If you go up to him, talk to him, click on the chat option, you will see rent a strong fence. You can rent all 10 of your fences from this dude right here. No need to do anything else. So just go ahead and click on him, click confirm, go ahead and chat again, click rent, confirm. Whenever you are done farming or if you've decided you're done farming, to give them back to him, you come back to the same person and you return the strong fences from your inventory. So pretty straightforward. That's how you get your contribution points back after you are done. Fences will last for a week if you don't harvest anything from them, so you don't have to worry about them disappearing and coming back as long as you're actively farming throughout. But anyway, now you need to decide where you want to grow your farm. So there's a whole like separate little mini game to farming here in Black Desert, and it's these icons in the top right corner of your screen on the map. So if you hover over any of these, that will show you the amount of groundwater available in locations, the temperature in various locations, the humidity information in different locations, so you got three basic things to consider for your planting, gardening, farming, whatever you want to use for a word. Now, every single plant that you're going to grow has different requirements for these different categories. But as a general rule of thumb, one of the best places to set up a farm, if you don't want to get too crazy into this and start reading every single seed you're going to grow and figure out the maximum min-max humidities and temperatures and everything, general rule of thumb is that near Velia, so up here where we see Velia, the port city, along this ridge is one of the best places to set up your farm. It's got a good mix of just about everything you need for every single type of plant. So if you don't want to go crazy about relocating your farm all the time, this coast of Velia is a great place to go. So I'm going to head on over there and I will meet you there in a second. So we are up at this ridge. This ridge is directly behind Logia Farm. It's this ridge right here once again. And you can see there's a huge area of flat land that has a beautiful view as well um, that you can start your farm at. So you'll actually see people that are standing here AFK. Those are people that are literally tending their farm. You just can't see other people's farms. But to go ahead and start placing your farm, open up your inventory, click on the fence, and then you'll get to place it in a different location. There are little indicators showing you the quality of the location that you're placing in. Doesn't particularly matter too much. I'm going to be entirely honest with you. Once again, it deals with that whole min-maxing thing. And as a beginner, you don't really need to worry about it. Plus, as somebody that's just going to have this running in the background, not like sitting here actively doing it every single day, it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, to go ahead and place your second farm, once again, just step off of that one. Place it down and repeat this process for as many plots of farmland as you have. The only thing I do want to say about placing these farms down is that we want to structure them in sort of like cube grid like regions and not just place them all willy nilly. That's because when we get later into fertilizing your plot, you'll be able to fertilize multiple plots with a single bag of fertilizer. But anyway, now we have our plots all set up and now we need to decide what seed or animal or whatnot we're going to grow. So if you do cooking or if you do alchemy, you're going to want to grow whatever products you use for those things so you don't have to buy them off the market or go harvest them yourself. Pretty straightforward concept. So one of the ingredients I use most frequently in my alchemy is this special fog mushroom right here. I have 4,000 of them in my inventory and I also have a bunch of their seeds sitting here as well. So I'm actually going to go grab those and bring them over here. Do note that every single seed you take takes up one inventory slot. So in order for me to plant these 21 seeds, I need 21 free available slots. And also I only have two farms, so I can only grow 20 of them. So anyway, I'm going to go grab those from my central market right down here, and I'll be right back. Now, not every single person is going to want to grow mushrooms, and you probably have something else you need to grow. So if you want to see all the different seeds you can grow, navigate over to the central market, and there are two different groups of seeds. You have the hypha group, so H-Y-P-H-A. You click on that, and it will show you all of the different hypha that you can grow, so all sorts of different 
like mushrooms and whatnot. And then if you go to the seed option and just type in seed into the search bar, you will see all of the different seeds you can grow. So the next thing you're gonna notice is that there's different rarities of these seeds. There's white, there's green, and then there's blue. The difference is, is that they will produce a different quality of product when they are harvested. So if you're using these in different crafting recipes, a blue grade material, so like this special strawberry seed right here, is going to be worth five units in the recipe. So if the recipe calls for four, you can use a single blue strawberry instead of having to use four white ones. Likewise, the green harvested grade items will be worth three units. So if the recipe calls for three units, then you can use one green strawberry or you could use one blue strawberry as well, either way. So they basically just reduce the number of materials you need on your person when you go to do some crafting, cooking, alchemy, whatever it is. If you're looking to make as much money as possible, you're gonna to wanna to look at the different seeds that you can buy off the market here, and then look what their final product sells for. An example of one that sells really, 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 really well is pepper. So pepper is always out of stock on the marketplace, but if you can pick up some special pepper seeds and harvest them later, then you'll be able to make a solid amount of profit off of them. All right, so we are back at our little farm location again, and if you press R on this, you will now see all of the different seeds in your inventory that you can place, and it's pretty straightforward. Just click on it and click spacebar to drop. Click on it, click spacebar to drop. You can even press the one key on the keyboard to open up the unit as well, or to drop it down and put it in the thing, and it's just one click space, one click space, one click space. And that's it, I've got my 10 units dropped here. The reason I have them all over on this one side of the farm is because when I place my fertilizer bag here in a second, I wanna be able to get multiple plots with a single bag of fertilizer. So anyway, that's it for that. If you go ahead and click on any one of these, you will see the estimated time for completion. So you can see that they're chilling at six hours and 18 minutes. You can see how it fares in the humidity and temperature based on where you've selected it. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna cover with this menu. It will also show you if your product has any different issues with it down here, which we'll get to here in a second as well. But anyway, we can go ahead and leave place mode and place our plants on the next side over here as well. All right, so we got our plots all set up here. They are ready to grow. So now we're gonna go ahead and talk about fertilizer. Fertilizer can just be straight up bought off of the marketplace the majority of the time. And it is not required in any way to do this. In fact, if you're just gonna set it up AFK and check it once a day, there's really no reason to do this whatsoever, unless you're absolutely trying to maximize your turnaround time for your farm. But anyway, let's just go ahead and buy one of these fertilizer bags to show you how it works. And then the difference between the different fertilizers is the areas that they cover. Anyway, as you can see, I'm standing between my two farms. If I open up my inventory and click on my fertilizer, my character has spread the fertilizer around. And if I go to any one of these plants, you will now see that the time dropped from six hours down to underneath five hours. So the fertilizer took an hour off of the time for this product. It's not an hour off for every single one that you grow, but it does lower the time quite substantially. So like I said, it will definitely impact your turnaround time on your farms. Now, while we're waiting for the farm to grow a little bit so I can show you some of the different mechanics, I am gonna talk about a different type of planting mechanic and that involves these mysterious seeds. So periodically while you are farming, when you go to harvest your product, you are going to get these mysterious seeds in your inventory. These mysterious seeds can be combined with any other seed to create a better seed. So this better seed takes up five slots in your garden but gives you more than five times the rewards you would get if you normally harvested that product. Basically, it makes your usage of your inventory space in your farm a bit more efficient. So to show you how that works, if you press the L key on the keyboard, navigate to shaking, click on a seed, click on the golden seed, and start, your character will mix the two of them together to create a mysterious seed of whatever. So now that we've let our garden go for a little bit, you can see that they're all at different levels of completion, so between 1% and 3% on this farm here, and you would think that they would all progress equally, so what's giving on this? The issue is that the garden is experiencing issues. So if you navigate to the My Gardens tab, which is underneath your health bar in the top left corner of the screen, and if you don't have that, you need to click this Edit UI button and click on Mount to make sure that Mount is shown because a garden is apparently a mount. But anyway, that will show up the garden icon, and from here you can see your different gardens. So each of the gardens that isn't fully producing has an issue with it, either a red little X or a leaf. So the leaf means you need to do something to it, and the red X means you need to do something to it. So if we go up to one of these plants that has this issue, you will see that when you get to it, it has a little circle that pops up above it. So this one says to prune. So we have to manually prune this garden to get it growing back at its maximum rate again. So if we look at the plant information tab, we can see that this one has now jumped up to 10 hours because we didn't prune it. So if we go ahead and prune it, we'll see that that time drops back down to that sub five hour time that we had before, or right around five hour time that we had before. So managing your garden is very important. It takes up energy to do this, but every time you do it, it will give you experience to your farming level. As you get up above the artisan tier of farming, you unlock different seeds that you can harvest. I'm not even artisan farming yet, so I can't really show you. But do note that these better seeds that you get at the artisan tier allow you to make a lot more money from farming. This is just a beginner's general overview how to get into farming. You do want to hit that artisan tier of farming as fast as possible. 
With that being said, that means it probably makes sense to sit here and just harvest and do all this stuff manually for quite a while until you hit the artisan tier of farming with a ton of farms, of course, not just managing two of them. But what if you don't want to deal with this like me and you have no interest and just want this to be a full-on AFK activity? Enter the world of workers. If you navigate back to that same garden tab, click on the list option, you will see all of your workers that are located relatively close to the city, and they can go ahead and work on the garden for you and do all of the pruning, all of that stuff for you. They will do everything except harvest it. So they'll basically keep that minimum time. So it'll keep it at that five hours instead of extending it to 10. Obviously you get no bonus EXP for doing all the pruning and everything yourself, but it saves you a ton of time. For this, you definitely want to use giant workers. It doesn't particularly matter what tier they are. You just want them to be giant so they have a lot of energy and they can work for a longer period of time. So we're just gonna go ahead and assign this one to him. Do note that any weeds or anything that your gardeners obtain, your workers obtain for you, will end up in your storage. So you can see I have 600 and something weeds sitting over here in Velia because of this. So anyway, that's how you go ahead and assign workers. If you don't know how to get workers, then check out my video on nodes and workers. It's a lot more informative and it's like 15 minutes long and I can't put a 15 minute guide in the middle of another 15 minute guide. But the link to that video is in the description below. And that's basically it for the setup of farming. Now we're gonna go ahead and fast forward until we get to the point where we can actually harvest this stuff. Holy cow, could you imagine if I made you sit here for five hours and actually sit here and watch it? There is one more thing though that I do wanna point out before we show you harvesting the crops. If you go ahead and hover over any one of your crops, you will see a fertilizer tab located on it. So this is how much fertilizer is remaining on the crop. If this runs out, your time decreasing booster effect will run out. So you do need to sort of keep a little bit of attention paid to this. But once again, if you're just doing it AFK, it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, after a crop is ready to harvest, you will see that it has a 100% located on top of the crop. And you will have two different options you can do. So the first option is to harvest the crop. And that will, as the name implies, just straight up harvest it and add whatever product it would have produced into your inventory. The thing that you're going to want to do if you want to have sustainable farming, however, is do plant breeding. So what plant breeding would do is if you had a lower tiered seed, it would give you a chance at a higher tiered seed back. But minimally, it will give you one seed back. So basically what I do personally when I do farming, and maybe you want to do something different if you just want to buy the seeds off the market or something, but I will harvest seeds until I have enough seeds to replant my entire garden. So like, for example, for this first seed, I would press F5 on it in order to do plant breeding, which will give me a seed back. And hopefully it gives me more than one. So I got two seeds back that time and I need a total of 20 seeds to replant this garden. So I would need to do this until I got 20 seeds. Anything over that I'll harvest to keep for myself and go ahead and make. Now beyond getting seeds when you press the breeding option, you also get these items right here. So you'll get unusual fruits, plant with rotting roots, seed half eaten by a bird, premature fruit, and mutant plant. If you get 20 of each of these, if you get 20 of any two of them actually, press the L key on the keyboard and navigate to simple cooking, you can combine them together to create stone tail fodder. Stone tail fodder is a breakthrough material used for a dream horse, or if you're looking to make money, you can go ahead and sell it back on the marketplace. So there are a whole bunch of people that will just straight up harvest seeds. They'll plant seeds, gather the seeds, take the stone tail fodder and sell the excess seeds on the market to make money as well rather than going to seeds for crops instead. So it's entirely up to you which route you want to do to make money. You will get a lot more of these as you get a higher level farming, you'll be able to get the seeds that have more rarity and et cetera, et cetera. So basically it is a skill that compounds itself really, really hard once you get over the artisan tier. But generally speaking, that's pretty much it guys. So all you do is sit here, wait for all of your crops to say that they're ready to be harvested at hundred percent. After they've been harvested and you've gathered them all, you go ahead and plant your seeds back and you rinse and repeat. As far as general quality of life stuff, people tend to keep an alt parked up here. So they'll take like a level 30 character or something that they don't really want to play too much. And they'll just have it sit here at this little coast and it will be their permanent farmer. They'll just run back and forth from the inventory, drop whatever they need to off. And that is pretty much it as far as it goes. But if this video is going to help you to get into farming, I do hope that it helps you to get into it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do like it, let me know in the comment section below. And also make sure to leave a like and make sure you're subscribed so you stay updated with new content, guides, and whatnot come out to the channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you the next live stream over on Twitch, the next YouTube video, or wherever I happen to see you. Bye.